Hi, okay, so today we are going to be test driving the new GPT-4 Omni 1 Preview Update LLM from OpenAI. And the test we're going to do is to see if it can do some complex math calculations. Now, in the email from OpenAI, they say that they are announcing a new series model of OpenAI 01, blah, blah, blah. And they're saying that this one can reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than previous models. Um, and it's saying that it's good in science, coding, and math. So let's see how good it really is. Now I've got a standard test that I usually run for some 3D computational um, tasks. And this is to generate a, a portal frame structure in my software GenFEA. So GenFEA is driven by spreadsheets uh, or spreadsheet inputs. And what we're going to ask GPT-401 to do is to generate nodes and frame elements based on a set of input criteria. So here's our criteria. So we're going to tell it, generate a portal frame structure with the dimensions. There's a span, eaves height, apex height, base spacing, etc. And we're going to um, tell it what is the format to use. Now, usually we build this into the software, but since the API for this particular model is not available yet, um, we'll just feed it straight into ChatGPT and see what happens. So we go in here, put the values in there, and I'm going to tell it to generate the CSV files for me that I can download so that I can bring it directly into my GenFEA software. So let's have a look at that and see what happens. Okay, so here we can see that it's starting to generate the nodes for us. So, so far it's looking quite promising. It's following the syntax and the format of GenFEA, which is what we expected it to do. And let's see what happens. So I actually asked it to generate the CSV and let me download it. Instead, it just gave me a table. I guess that's okay. We'll just use that. Let me create a new Excel workbook. And what we'll do is we'll just paste it in there and we will then copy it across to GenFEA. So we'll take all of these values here. We'll pop over to GenFEA and we'll just paste it in there and see what happens. So let's update the model. Okay, that looks pretty good. So if we switch on node labels here, we can see there are the nodes. Pretty good, but we're missing the purlins. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to say, what about the purlins? Okay, so now it's generating an updated table for us, and hopefully this will include all the Perlin locations. Now, while it's busy doing that, let's just look at the prompt here. So what I told it to do was to create Perlins at a maximum spacing of 700 millimeters center to center. So um, there's quite a lot that it needs to compute, and usually they do fail when generating this. So I tried this in the past with Grok version two, which did a pretty good job, not perfect, but a pretty good job. So we'll see how it performs um, in this version of uh, Omni one. So let's take the first set there. Um, we'll just remove all of these, we'll paste that in there, and we'll do the next part. So I've sped this up a little bit with my back and forth getting the information out and we'll see the results pretty soon. Wow, that is super impressive so far. Okay, so let's take our uh, frame elements. Now what I did here was just go back and forth a little bit until I figured out how to get the data across efficiently and then import it straight into GenFEA. And let's see what happens now. Ah, oh, great. So it's bringing it in as frame elements. It's picking up those column headers. Uh, the groups are correct. Everything here looks pretty good. Let's see what happens if we update the model. Oh my word, there we go. That is extremely good. I am super impressed. In fact, I think if we switch on the supports, we're going to see the supports there. So everything working first moment. And we can see the discretization and everything happening there. We don't have Eve beams, but that's okay. We didn't ask it for those. So I guess um, that's all right. Um, wow. 
Okay, that is impressive. These are not discretized, but that's okay because we can use the discretize elements in GenFEA to do that for us. So there we go. That is fantastic. This is miles ahead of any of the other LLMs at this stage. Okay, now let's take this a step further. I get the question a lot, can we generate wind loads automatically um, using AI in GenFEA? So let's see if OpenAI can do that. Let's have a look. So we'll just ask it to generate some wind loads based on the current model that we've got and see what outputs we get from that. While that's happening, we'll go and set up the load case here in GenFEA so that it can accept the load. So we'll just add a load case here we'll call this one WL and we'll just hit apply so it's just a linear static load and what we're expecting to see is an output sheet here where we can just copy and paste or import the load straight into um, the loads sheet and see what happens okay so it's calculating some stuff here 40 meters per second wind pressure we can see this happening that looks pretty good I'm not gonna go through all of this yet but it's generating the CSV. This is looking promising. So it's calculating wind loads on the columns. It's wind loads on the rafters, the roof. Wind loads to the global axis. Oh my word, this is looking really fantastic. Okay, so here we go. Let's take this again. And we pop into Notepad++. Let's take out all of the stuff here that we don't need this one wind.csv okay now let's go back into genfea select our sheet and we're going to import csv and we bring in the wind here it's picking it up that it's loads add to the sheet boom there we go that was quite easy uh, one thing though is we need the same values for w2 um, so that looks good this is all in direction X and we have some in Z. Let's see what happens. So we're going to update the model here. No errors. Okay, some errors. No supports to find. Load type not recognized. Let's see this one. So why would that be? Ah, okay. So this is okay. Let's just move this column into here. And these are all going to be line. Okay, update that again. Let's see, so load case not defined, load case is sheet, uh, because this is in the wrong one. That's looking better. Okay, now if we go and change our load case here, oh, let's first do this. Let's just do a front view. Uh, let's go to nodes and it did create the supports, but because I discretized the model, obviously that got lost again somehow. So let's just update this. Now we shouldn't have any errors. That's good, which means we'll be able to run an analysis. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's minimize this. Let's go, we're on the wind load case. So let's switch on the loads. Mm, ah, we discretized the model. That's why it's obviously mismatching these loads. We can see it's tried to do that. Um, okay, so I guess what we'll need to do is to feed it the latest model. So let's quickly extract the information and send it off. Okay, then I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and I'm going to feed it this information and say generate accordingly. So what we'll do here is we'll feed the information on the new discretized model with the new configuration, send it off to ChatGPT, tell it to study it and to generate the new loads according to that. So we're getting an output here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so what we'll do is we will extract the information, process it, save it as a CSV so that it's compatible with GenFEA and then import it back in. Loads. Very good. So we just said that all of these need to move across by one. So we'll just take this. And that should work. So let's go and update the model. 
that is looking good that is looking really good update it again we have zero errors we have our loads applied look at that that is absolutely fantastic and let's run the analysis on this one and see what happens all right so let's look at some outputs here so we can see that we're getting results from the model all through AI none of it manually modeled of course it took a bit of time and you might argue that scripts could probably do it a lot faster but scripts are static um, this is dynamic it's converting prompts into actual outputs and soon we'll combine this with the existing tools um, in Genefia um, for DesignMate, which you know allows you to create input workbooks. Um, we'll hook up with the latest APIs from GPT soon, um, as soon as it becomes available. And then we'll extend our existing features and model generation to do a lot more like you've seen here automatic wind loading more complex structures and really just fantastic so if you want to give this a try with its existing features you know you can download genifia and install it and use a trial version of it um, thanks for watching and see you soon bye